All right, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm here again together on a Thursday afternoon. We're thankful to God for bringing us back together again to continue our study in the Gospel of John, uh, the fifth fifth study or the ninth and tenth chapters at least, and possibly more, depending on how how well we uh, do with it, and <clears throat> how deeply we get into it, and how far we go. Amen. Want to do what's good and right in God's sight. Want to glorify God with what we say and do. So let's um, let's first pray, and then we will look into the Word of God. See what it says. Get ourselves here right quick. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you in prayer, asking you bless the reading of this word, God. Allow us to see and understand and know you better, Lord God, and draw closer to you through your word. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. And the Gospel of John chapter 9. <clears throat> Amen. And Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that, he, the, the, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So this, whole man, this man's blindness was set and brought about so that when Jesus came, he could heal him to show who he was. Amen. God had already preordained these things to be. All right, so Jesus says, neither this man has sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Another miracle done by Jesus. How about that? In verse 12, Then they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and when it was the Sabbath, and it was the Sabbath to the Pharisees, excuse me, I'm running words together here, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Now, you see several times we've already seen how Jesus always does these things on the Sabbath day. Why is he doing this? He's challenging their religious tradition, their religiosity. He's showing that the Sabbath day being a holy day, these things are, are, are good. These things are good to be done. That they took their religious traditions and set them above the things of God. And we still see that today. People set their religious traditions above the things of God. Amen. And then verse 16 says, Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind, and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. They weren't believing and they weren't going for this. So they called for this man's parents to come. 
to verify that this was their son and he in fact was blind from birth okay and we'll see that here in a second verse 19 and they asked him saying is this your son whom ye say was born blind how then doth he now see his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by what means he now seeth we know not or who hath opened his eyes we know not he is of age ask him he shall speak for himself now watch this these words spake his parents because they feared the jews for the jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. And we still see that today. They were so worried about getting kicked out of the church and losing their membership at the church that they wouldn't. They didn't want to say anything. They were afraid. We see people today that won't admit if miracles are real, won't adhere to the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of the Bible for for their religious tradition. They would rather hang on to their tradition, even if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, for fear of not being accepted by these other people because the church is more of a social thing to them than it is a thing of salvation and a way of life and we still see that today that people would rather not read the word of god and not accept the truth than to accept it and go against their religious tradition okay well we we say this we believe in this if we raise our hands or say hallelujah or worship we'll get kicked out they don't want to hear that their religious tradition means more to them than the word of god which is exactly why we said before that when these some of these people stand before god in judgment he'll say depart from me i never knew you okay and his parents did that because they were afraid of being put out of the synagogue verse 23 therefore said his parents he is of age ask him then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Talking about Jesus. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they unto him again, What did he do to thee? How open he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already. And ye did not hear? Wherefore would you hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him. They got mad when he said that to him. You know, you religious people, you don't they don't like you to tell them that you don't agree with them or they might be wrong. They're gonna run you off and get mad when that happens, right? That religious spirit rises up. You who are who are you? I'm the preacher, I'm this, I'm that. They're so proud in what they have, they don't even know that they don't know the truth. They don't refuse to hear the truth and they get angry with you because of their pride. And what's the Bible say pr about pride? Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Okay. Verse 28. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing. That ye know not from whence he is. And yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God. And doeth his will. Him he heareth. Since the world began. Was it not heard of that any man opened the eyes. Of one that was born blind. If this man were not of God. He could do nothing. And that man was telling him. There's no, and there are nobody's eyes, you don't ever read nobody's eyes being open like this and what has happened here. If he wasn't from God, this couldn't happen. So he has to be from God. They didn't want to hear that. And they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? There they go. They don't want to be told, right? And they cast him out. They said they kicked him out of the church. His parents didn't want to stand up because they didn't want to lose their membership there, you know. But he stood up because he knew what happened to him. He had a real experience with the Lord and he stood on that. Okay. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he? Lord, that I might believe on him. And Jesus said unto him, 
Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. Now watch this. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. He said, You got sin because you don't confess the truth of what you've seen and what's happened here. You still cling and hold on to your religious tradition rather than the things you see taking place. You won't admit it. You won't confess it to be of God. And again, it goes back. I've seen people shown, see people healed miracles, and they still, no, no, that's not for today because they'd rather hang on to their religious tradition and their church things than the truth of God's word, okay? John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know the voice, know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Talking about false prophets and people that came, trying to even back then, claim to be the Messiah before he came. Nobody followed them. His sheep didn't. They knew that he wasn't the voice that they were supposed to follow. Okay? Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not for to kill, steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling are not, and not the shepherd, he's just a, a hired hand working there, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, talking about the Gentiles, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down. Of my life. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father. There was a division therefore. Among them the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said. He hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said. These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, 
and they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. My Father gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou hast, that thou being a man, makest thou self God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do the through, if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. And there he abode, and many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Amen. Praise the Lord. We see that they believed. He spoke and they believed. They did what they were told to do. They followed because not only the miracles, it was a big part of them. The miracles were done. Amen. Absolutely. But also that the way he spoke and what he said, he had the authority of God on him. And it couldn't be denied. Just like today, when you hear somebody that's under a true anointing of God, there's no denying that God's with those people. There's some that come and act like they're of God, and some people, yeah, he's of God, but what the words he speaks and the things he does, if they don't line up with the word of God, he is not of God. Amen. A lot of false prophets have gone out because of this very thing. What we have to understand is through this word we're reading and understand who he was, who he is, and why we have to follow him and what he said for us to do, okay, to be saved and to glorify God. Amen. All right, well, praise the Lord. We're going to stop there and pick up, Lord willing, next week on John chapter 11. I hope the Lord blessed you through this word. Again, always, if you have any questions or want to discussion or Bible study or look into more things, feel free to get in touch, contact me, and we'll sit down and look at these things. Amen. All my sole goal anymore is just to help people know the word of God, knowing God through his word, obeying the truth and being saved and when they do get to judgment here well done thou good and faithful servant and not depart from me you workers of iniquity i never knew you this is what it's all about all right lord bless i appreciate everybody until next time